We've been hearing about these kind of failures ever since the attack happened. But now that we're seeing this report, what stands out to you? Good morning, Stephanie. That's the right question, because there was a lot in this report that we have heard before. But there's a lot of new things as well, including, I think, the extent to which the Capitol Police profoundly failed on so many levels, as you just described there. And really, I was interested in the fact that the Capitol Police had very granular intelligence that we at NBC News had previously reported on about uh, posts on social media involving plans to attack the Capitol, maps of the tunnels around the Capitol, discussions about overwhelming the police line. So explicit language about attacking the Capitol, which is the very thing that the FBI, that DHS, and that the Capitol Police say did not exist. They are continuing to say there was no intelligence that anyone would attack the Capitol, despite the clear evidence in this report and elsewhere that there was such intelligence. But that brings me to another uh, new thing here, which is what's not in this report. That while the, the Senate committees had a lot of granularity on what the Capitol Police did, because they got emails, they got message traffic, they did interviews with Capitol Police, they did not have the same visibility over what was going on inside the FBI and DHS because those agencies resisted some of their document demands. And this really underscores why it's, it's a tragedy that we don't have this bipartisan commission with subpoena power because the FBI is going to resist an internal inquiry into what they knew and what people were saying about the intelligence they gathered. That's still an open question, Stephanie, is what intelligence did the FBI have about threats, and why didn't they, for example, issue an intelligence bulletin before this event? Uh, the last thing I'll say is th this was a harrowing report in the sense that it had a lot of firsthand testimony from Capitol Police officers who described for the first time just how terrible it was that they felt abandoned by their leaders, they didn't have the right equipment, and they were under assault by a vicious mob who they thought was trying to take their lives, Stephanie. General, we knew this was coming. Our own reporters at NBC wrote about it in the days leading up to it. Yet what struck me about this report is that it appears no one was in charge, either before or during the attack. Literally, like there was no plan. Am I overstating that? Well, uh, Stephanie, we captured and turned into the House and as well as to the Senate Sergeant at Arms on 5 March. Uh, many of the same recommendations that uh, you see coming out of this report, I must say this report going into much more detail as they've had, they've taken about five months to produce it. We produced ours on 5 March, the quick look. And it reinforced the fact that uh, there was intelligent failures, there was training failures. Uh, that's all been documented. The key thing now is how do we get to the supplemental to get funding to make the additional improvements. We saw on Monday there was a major training exercise done by the Capitol Police and their agencies. So things are moving forward. But we need the supplemental, and as the previous speaker said, uh, it reinforces why we need the commission. Uh, if you're going to get into the details that this report attempted to get in, it needs to be a complete interagency, and we get through that by having the commission. And reinforce why we have the commission, and reinforce why we need to get the supplemental funded. And on the supplemental, they fund what they want. If they want to use a different tactic for having the National Guard stand by, good. Uh, but many of the recommendations in this report that came out this morning uh, uh, was given to uh, both the House and the Senate on uh, 5 March. But, Frank, even if you have the funding, even if you have the money, you need the will to do something. The FBI had the information. The DHS had the information. Even Capitol Police's own intelligence division had the information, and all of them failed to share this information with the officers and protect them. How does that happen, and how does new funding solve that? Well, first of all, you, you, you need complete turnover in the intelligence professionals within the Capitol Police Department. And you need something even bigger, uh, Stephanie, because this report again speaks out to the issue that we seem unable to see ourselves as a threat. If the intelligence was there, and it was, and as Kendall Indian has said, in some specificity, the, the report says, you know, they knew there, were a, a, there was access to tunnel uh, schematics and, and, how, and the infrastructure of the Capitol. 
If that can't be seen as a viable threat, then we need to change the rules of how intelligence is gathered and how investigations can be conducted domestically. And until I hear that the rules of the road have been changed for the FBI, for DHS, even for Capitol Police investigators, that that they can't currently go out and feel like they can't collect information on U.S. citizens because they might infringe on free speech or freedom of assembly. Until we figure out how that can happen, we may see this happen again. We are unwilling to see ourselves as a threat. That's a really important point. Garrett, what gets me, the report says the Department of Justice and the DHS didn't fully comply, meaning they didn't cooperate with the Senate committee, committee's request for information. The House Sergeant at Arms didn't comply at all. Do we have any idea why? On some of these cases, we do. The Senate committee aides who put together this report weren't terribly surprised that the House didn't comply. Neither chamber likes it when the other meddles in their business. There are, of course, House side investigations going on even now. As for DHS and DOJ, the committee aides say they're still trying to get at that information, and mostly internal documents, internal communications. DOJ really uh, takes its lumps in this report as the agency that should have been in charge on that day at which leadership was not not really engaged as they should have been, at least that's the report's uh, conclusion here. But again, this will certainly increase, bring back those calls for a commission that can examine this holistically, that can throw subpoenas around and try to get at this information. But in this case, you had Senate committees trying to move quickly to get a report done when they knew they weren't going to get full compliance. And I just want to make a point on something that Ken said. I think the, the, the uh, leadership of Capitol Police gets really uh, hung up in this report too. Too. Remember, the sergeant at arms of both chambers have since resigned. So, too, has the chief that was at, uh, working that day. The current acting chief does not fare well in this report. That leadership house cleaning is already underway. But the report also goes out of its way to praise the heroism of the rank and file Capitol Police who kept us all safe that day.